Mr. Vinod Chandani, Chief Information Officer, Digital Transformation and Design Thinking led Patel Engineering, to please join us on stage and provide his perspective on the growth and globalization of Indian EPC industry. Patel Engineering Limited is a stalwart in the infrastructure and construction sector since 1949. Mr. Vinod Chinnani has over 15 years experience as an innovation and digital strategy authority. Mr. Vinod bridges technology, psychology and design to architecture transformative solutions across industries. His holistic leadership shines through innovations like Patel Engineering's technology CSR policy and the corporate wellness program. Patel Engineering, a trailblazer in the field, leaves a mark on the industry which its iconic projects, including the coming hydroelectric project, project that will contribute towards making Arunachal Pradesh a power surplus state. Rampur Hydroelectric Project, a 412 MW hydropower station situated on the Satluj River and Sirlui Hydroelectric Project, the largest hydro plant in Mizoram. Ladies and gentlemen, let's clap and welcome Mr. Vinod Chandani, Chief Information Officer, Digital Transformation and Design Thinking led Patel Engineering. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We at Patel Engineering are pretty much in the hydro domain. So first, let me take you, walk you through the company itself. Some of our major achievements, most of us are from the same fraternity, so I'm not going to take too much time. But the reason I put this together, because I wanted to create a foundation based on which the next slides are going to come up. We are 15,000 megawatts into hydropower projects. These are all from the latest annual report. 87 dams all across the country. The mountains are pretty much our office. 300 kilometers of tunnels. That includes the one which are the HRT tunnels in our hydro. 4,000 meters of drilled shafts. That includes the Rampur one. Transport 1,200 kilometers of roads. Irrigation and water supply, acres of land irrigated is 5.5. The reason I came up with all of this is because we have some very unique challenges in the hydro sector. One, we make projects which are pretty much building the nation, but that has its own challenge. They're very cost effective and very time consuming. We are very capital intensive business, so knowing and tracking costs down to the unit costs is of prime importance. Our industry is not static in nature. We do businesses, our business keeps changing. Earlier it was item rate. Now you're talking about boot, that's in 2010, JVs and etc. Contracts and arbitration is one of our major verticals within the business. We work in very remote areas. Most of us, Mr. Sandeep said, Mr. Atta, right up at Atal Tunnel. We've done the Sela Pass, minus 15 degrees temperature, everything freezes. Almost no internet connectivity at that time. We worked on BSATs, Palma at the time. I remember there was a time uh, in our Parvati Tunnel, uh, the hydro project, and I, we had to take the KU dish up. And there was a local contractor there and I said, you know, he, there was no connectivity. He said, there's no line. I said, oh, rupar le jao. So after half an hour, he called me. He said, sir, yahan se bhi nahi aa raha hai. I said, oh, rupar le jao. He said, kahan le jao, aage Himalaya hai. I have no place to go. The deal, we deal mainly with un unpredictable issues. All geological conditions, earthquakes, floods, name it. Uh, we've had flash floods right in our projects where we had to put food through the ventilation tunnels. We have a unique blend of blue, gray, and white collar employees. The blue, the labor. The gray, the semi-skilled. And the white, 
and they all have to work together. We work across the length and the breadth of the country. And that has its own challenge, because we are dealing with cultures right across the country, where we go and establish ourselves for years, and we have to bring in our own core team of people. All of them have to work together and actually complete the project on time. So our digital journey. When I was invited here to speak, I was wondering what should I put together? Because we are all here from the same industry. The targets are the same. The data is the same. But we all have one unique thing, our own journey. And we have a particularly unique journey. Let me take you back. So once upon a time, I guess we all recognize this as our own offices. Some in the 1990s, for us, as late as 2010. So this is where we were in 2010. Very few computers, a couple of work groups across some of our divisions, limited number of common email IDs because of the fear of viruses. So we never had internet connectivity to the extent that we can even dream of today. Only standalone softwares like Tally and the like, which are in the industry. No centralized storage system. We all had data on our own computers. Physical documents were sent daily between HO and sites by courier services, because the same site which I was talking about, and I'll tell you the story prehand, when we implemented our first ERP, I asked them, uh, and that was supposed to be data sent real time. And I asked them, how can it not work? They said, oh, sir, this is not going to work. I said, why? He said, first, we send the attachment, hoping that it goes through, and then we send another email, because that much we can do on the phone as well. Some data and voice communication, weather permitting. There's another site of ours calming itself in Tenga. On a Sunday morning, there used to be a line of our employees who'd want to connect to their families because that was the only time we could rescue our bandwidth for them to talk on the dish. Project sites were extremely remote. Thankfully, today, we've reached the moon. And also, we've got some of the best connectivity to go to the same sites. Earlier, it was going to a National Geographic expedition. We used to pack our bags and the medicines and everything, not knowing if you're going to get there. So what happens then? So we went in, and I, I came in in 2010 with a very small team. And we had all of this coming at us. And we said, where do we start? Because everything was urgent. And the minute they heard we're having some IT solution, I had people come in from all corners. The VSAT is not working. We don't have documents. Uh, we cannot talk to our families. So I'm a big proponent of design thinking. So we don't start anything till we don't have a conversation. And the conversation begins with discovery. Now, this discovery is not about requirements. This discovery is about just one thing, conversations to understand your needs and your wants better. So for six months, we traveled to each of our sites, talking to each and every individual as to what is it that they need from us. And most times, it is not a digital solution. It is actually just a simple process. I'll give you a very strange example. We went to one of our sites, and um, we, had very lim we had just started introducing computers as we were going along to the sites. And the table that was kept in front of the gentleman was uh, kept in front of him like this. And uh, the wire that was going up to the wall was on this side. I went in and I said, this doesn't make sense. You jump a wire every single time you have to go. Why can't we just turn it this way? So I told the IT guys, everybody, change. So next morning, they had all of them sitting this way instead of facing this way. We're happy we changed the computers and everything, went back for lunch, and everybody's sitting back like this. It's like, what? 
didn't make sense. So by afternoon, we said, you know what? This is the way to kick us out. So we went back, changed it back again. Next morning, we come back, and everybody's sitting like this again. Like, you guys are jokers or what? So one guy came up and said, he said, aap to chale jaoge. Lekin wo jo local aata hai na, wo aise maarta hai. To jab aise maarta hai, to aise baitta hai, to chance milta hai piche jane ka. Aise jata hai, to wo sida kaan pe maarega. So things were unique. You did not need a digital solution at the time. You just needed a man on the job. When you understand people, technology becomes a tool for you to work. Like he said, we are not an IT company. We are an engineering company. We provide tools to people to do their job well. Our job is to go and understand them so that they can be the best they can be at that moment. And that's what discovery allows you to do. You come down to exploring after all the data that you've collected, and then you understand what would be the best fit. Is it really an IT tool, or is it just probably something that they can raise their desk so that they don't get neck pain? You come to design. Design the solution. You just don't bring in a tool. Then you test it. You test it over and over again, and you test it on the people who are going to use it, not on a set of people of IT coders who are actually just going to do it and tell you if the thing works. Does it work for them is the question. And listen. Listen, listen, and keep listening because that is where you'll find all the problems. And then implement. So a lot of things about adaptation and change management. Usually it is you do all of this, and then how are we going to do the change management? Adaptation different from adoption. Adaptation is how you're going to make them adjust. And the truth is, you don't do it later. You do it all the time. Change management starts from the time you've intended to do the job. Adaptation is how you think they are going to actually adjust to this. Once you've got this two ingredients together, you've got adoption right with you. We did this, we followed this through, and it is a, it is a very good recipe that works. So you keep repeating it, at every time of your business re-engineering solution. So this helps you come up with a challenge statement. So we had a problem in the company. We came back and we said, we have to have a challenge statement. That is one of the premise and the basic foundation of design thinking. That you set up a problem statement that you intend to stop. It is your mission statement for the company. It should be validated throughout the life cycle of your solution. So the one that we came up in 2010, before we started on any of our digital journey, was how do we provide a secure and robust IT infrastructure to support all Patel employees and stakeholders for accessing data anywhere, anytime, and on any device in a cost-effective way. And this mission we set up when we had absolutely no infrastructure. We didn't have servers. All we had is a few computers infected with viruses. That's it. Our present is what we did in the past. And our tomorrow is what we do today. Data is the best reality check for the above. Learn from your past, correct your mistakes, and succeed in the future. You start with data. Data allows you to get information. Information which leads to some intelligence. Predictive analysis, dashboards, an A4 report for the MD. From there, you get knowledge. Knowledge of what you do and you do not do in the right time. And that gives you the power. 
the power to predict, the power to be over your competitor, the power to actually take the leap forward with the risk that you think you would be able to handle. And if it is, you get the wisdom. So this is where we went the first time, 2010 to 2021. Our learnings from our research and our solutions. The first thing we did is discovered the USP of our company. So when we went doing all the interviews and the mind maps and everything together, we got our data together. And we said, what is it about Patel Engineering that turns people on? What is it that represents us? Who are these people that we are designing and providing solutions with? Our USP was integrity. People don't leave us. We are a family company, encouraged by the promoter. We've had people who've sat with the chairman of the company at actually ground level, literally, you know how they show them sitting on the train tracks, and that man was heading the head of material management 65 years later. We have a council of systems and wisdom where we elevate them to the cloud where nobody leaves us. We use them as internal consultants, as gods who lead us. This whole thing was to tell you one thing, that our audience is from 70 down to 18. And we have to design for all of them. Once you know your customer, internal, external stakeholders, it's half your battle is already achieved. So that's what we kept in mind, and that's where we started. No side communication, a big challenge. We flipped VSAT dishes from Parma to KU, raised towers. What was a challenge at that time has become an enabler now. We'll get to that. No computer network anywhere. We didn't have connectivity to get things here, so we came up with the local stuff. We had the NAS box, but at least people were storing data in their local setup. So now we could put one hard drive in instead of going to 10. No ERP. We went live with a new ERP system in 2012 with the intention to move to SAP in six years. Very important point. Why didn't we go with SAP in 2010? Most of our competitors already had it, HCCs and everybody else. Why did not we? The line is in the first statement. We were not ready for it. The fact that we did not go with SAP was by design and not by chance. We were just not ready. Our people would not have adopted or adapted to it because we were still working in paper. Our security lied in the fact that the MD and the chairman knew us, they hired us. We had to be redundant. So SAP was known to be too efficient at this time and also the business processes were not standard enough that we could afford consultants at the time who would be sitting with us for three years before we even know what we were doing. Because everything was hierarchical, it was based on tenure, trust was earned because you knew somebody, and that's true, because we were still not there. The document management system, there was nothing, absolutely nothing. We had a yard which actually can have we used to give it to Maruti, actually, to bring their stuff in before the, yeah, before the Octroi. And 60% of it is lying with files. No standard SOP for non-digital instructions either. There was, no digital, there was no instruction. It was basically, I trust you, get the work done, and some paperwork to go with it. Was it repeatable? Maybe. Was it not repeatable all the time? Subjective authorizations based on trust. We got the ERP in, workflow. Excel operation reports. Some continued even after the previous ERP. Why? Because in the first place, like I said, it was by design that we went to the other ERP. Because we did not have a system. Our SOPs had to evolve. So they continued because we could go back only to the digital provider to the best of what we knew how our business runs. We did not have a standard process. So how were they going to deliver it? Each project site and individual enterprise, central control, none. What this ERP did, the previous one, was actually we started having a conversation. The previous one, every site was its own company. 
Did we meet each other? No. Did you know who was there? Never. Did you ever meet a project manager? No. There was no need. The project controller went there, met with them, got back, got the numbers in, we were go. No centralized intelligence of any division. Physical registers to track line items of DPR at sites. Now we're doing data entry in the system. Earlier, everything was on books. No interactions between divisions or sites. And the last one. Our employees wanted change. This is what we went for. But there was fear. Fear of what, though? The one way to get rid of fear is to decriminalize fear. But the fear was primarily that they would be thrown out if a computer came in. They did not know enough. We are in construction. They would expose somebody. Or in the bargain, they would be overriding somebody else what they did. Or the last one, they would have to do more work. All of this fear just stopped with change. They did not want to do it. So how did we achieve this? This is when our journey started to the cloud, 2022. In February of 2022, I was called in and said, we need SAP. This time, it wasn't get an ERP, it was get SAP. Now, the question wasn't, they've already decided on the software, we had to find an implementation partner. So again, the question came in from the design thinking perspective, so let's discover, let's explore, let's test, and let's see what we need to do to implement. Why did we get there? It was overwhelming for us because our refresh cycle of our servers were overdue, the previous ones. So the question was, do we go invest in CapEx in all our systems, or do we just look at something else? Banking and compliance had come of age, and our legacy system could not support our new needs. The gentleman from Oswald said, we're doing well. Yes, we are doing well. But then we have our stakeholders who actually need more insight into our business today. Banking, we have our, our partners or stakeholders. They sit there. They are the ones who we submit our budgets to. They are the ones who we give our fund approvals to. Most clients have come under escrow. They want us to bill individually, and they'll pay only for that. NHPC does it all the time. Compliance has gone up. Paperwork has gone up. Support documents are to be published at any time, any place, because we come under the BRSR. Client monitoring has increased. On one of the sites that was mentioned, we were running a bit late. And guess what happens? The client sends six GMs. I've never heard an IT GM sit at the site and say, why couldn't you put data entry? Because we had no connectivity. That wasn't an answer. Next morning, we had a tower, which we were trying to get for the last six months. Clients now sit in our system. The recent job that we had now, the client asked us that not only does he want to see the R0 budget, but he actually wants to see how it moves. Internal project planning and monitoring controls have matured. Earlier, our projects were 500 crores. Now we talk about 2,000 crores to start with. Those have to be delivered in time. Projects earlier went, ran to six to eight years, some 10, just completing. But the ones that we got in COVID, I intended to get closed this year. We had three years. Projects get handed over to partner companies who couldn't complete it earlier, right in the middle of it. And one of the jobs that we had, we had to start pouring concrete even before we got our LOI. Because we had to get the work done. They were central government projects. We had over 5 TB of data sitting on our servers. COVID made work from anywhere reality. This time, data had to be available anywhere, anytime. So if you go back to the challenge statement that we had said, everything that we thought that we want to do was a demand right up from the business now. Communication was distributed on email, personal computers, WhatsApp, and data was demanded 24-7. I don't think there's any corporation in this world today who's struggling with data not having to sit on their WhatsApp groups. Once the person leaves, 
they go with the data. Microsoft is expensive. You put anything behind their firewall, it comes to about 34 lakhs for 400 employees to put in their Windows Defender. Security was getting complex and ransomware and the likes of it. So all of us said, do we really need to invest back again on in-house servers or do we go on the cloud? We went live on SAP. The reason I'm going fast is because I'd rather give you the journey of SAP. With Hybar Technologies, we had a choice, like I said, of choosing the vendor, but not the product. We invited some of the big fours, and we realized that where we are, again, we know our customer this time, and where we would go with them, our closest partner would be somebody who understands civil engineering. Most of the people in our setup, we all rotate within these four or five companies. They came from one of them. They understood the business. They understood our needs. And the good thing is, we did not have to start with a conversation. We started with a discussion. So going with them was a no-brainer. We went live on April 2023. But the seed of this started in February of 2020. By the time we could zero in and realize what we wanted, we said we start implementation in November and we go live in April. A very aggressive, very, very aggressive timeline. But were we confident of it? Yes, we were. Why were we confident? Is because we had a partner who understood us. Fortunately, a lot of the heads of our department, of our company departments who were in HO, were actually employees of HCC and Hybar Technocrat also have their roots in HCC. So they understood each other. A lot of them knew each other. Our relationships go deep. So demanding became natural. That's when we set it up. A lot of their stuff was prepackaged, an RA bill, something that we had to develop. They came with a banquet of them. We went live one by one on the target date that we had committed, April 17th, 2023. And what I need to tell you is that most of these were inaugurated by our planning and engineers on the site. They set up the date. They completed every project, they bought data in, and they said, we will do the first transaction on each of these sites. We took a leap forward with Rise on SAP and Hiva delivered. Why are we saying we took a leap forward with Rise on SAP? By the time we decided that we needed SAP, we didn't have a damn choice. We were already on the cloud. They didn't sell it to us. So did we have to go on the cloud? Yes. Did we know what's going to be offered? No. But we knew one thing. We're going to do it. Because we wanted SAP. How are we going to do it? We had to study it back again. But this time, we had some firepower. We had young people. Our engineers wanted this. Our management wanted this. Our top management came together as a team and took a call within a week, saying, we have to do this. All our young engineers were all fired and fueled up. And thankfully to our partners and SAP too, we ran all variables and scenarios of why we would not work for a good four months. And I see Mr. Jayesh is here. I think he had endless rounds in our office till, you know, how many FUEs we would need. It was Latin. If one thing I would tell the SAP team is come up with some matrix to understand the damn FUEs. Nobody knows. What did it give us? It gave us a, it gave us a very deep understanding of the fact that a product which was so matured, when you give it a new life, it is new to everybody. The Hybar team, this was the first project they did on Rise with SAP for the Hydro, and so was the SAP team. So we had a confusion because we have a lot of documents. Like I said, we went from paper to digital, and now we are going to digital to cloud. There was no way we could afford SAP DMS at the numbers that they came. But when we saw the functionality 
and our requirements for the same, we realized that there's one thing missing in Patel, is that we can never produce documents for support immediately against a transaction that could be recognized. So we divided our requirements for document management into two. This helped us divide the entire production line of our company into two, pre-production and post-production. To manage, is SAP cheap? No, like I said. But we had to get it, so we said, okay, everything that we do pre-production in DMS goes into SharePoint. I'm sorry, it goes into SAP. And everything that goes into post-production goes into SharePoint. But we wanted an integrated window. They did it. Microsoft and the likes have all APIs open. That makes it just simple for us to design our product. So everything that happens at a transactional level, where you actually go through the whole purchasing cycle, sits in SAP DMS at that transaction level. And everything that we do with post-production, the GRN, the supporting, the RA bills, I mean, the, the, the invoices and stuff that come in, they go and sit in Microsoft. In the last three months alone, on four sites, we've collected 86,000 documents scanned into our system which otherwise are sitting in files, physical files at the site, a copy of it reaches our warehouse. Because remember, money is made in arbitration for a lot of our sites. But when you think like this, you got to pull everybody along because the auditors said, nothing doing, we want paper. You go and ask them why. They say, but that's the way we do it. So how are doing it this way? Oh, they're not going to allow. Who's not going to allow? Oh, they are not going to allow. But who's they? They don't know. So in some places when you make change, when you introduce change, you hold somebody's hand, you take them along with you, or you nudge. Or sometimes you just force it down their throat. We did all three. So now we have a DMS. That helps us with one version of the truth. A file that was actually kept here was earlier shared. We used to go back and forth with just sharing the file, so that wasn't really effective because we were loading our emails and our servers because everybody has, everybody's familiar with those, somebody has to address one email to you with an attachment and 17 people are copied and you don't even know why they're in it. And the first thing they hit is reply all. So it's like a WhatsApp chain of messages with your attachment going back and forth, and you're worried that they're going to pay Microsoft again to increase the space, because you cannot delete something, right? Because you've got to need it in contracts. What COVID did is got us into a platform with Microsoft where collaboration came in instead of sharing. So now that same document, somebody could work on and see on Office 365, what somebody was working at the site, they could see it here. So they did not have to download the file. They could work on the same file simultaneously. That is something we achieved in COVID, even before SAP. So we were confident of the solution that we are going to provide our people who were working in fear of losing their work. Arbitration and contracts, like I said, now we've introduced the, uh, the collaboration. Materials management, before when we started our first ERP for 37,000 items, we had about 1,67,000 codes. Nothing was standardized. The previous legacy system helped us standardize it with SAP in materials management. Now what we've achieved it, we can actually go down and trace a material down to which shelf it is on. But each shelf is not the end of it. On that shelf, at what level it is parked, we can actually trace it from HR. We managed to do that in SAP without using their warehousing software. Spares, ETM is no longer a natural part of the SAP um, uh, buffet. So they achieved something even grand for us. The spares, which were lying for years together in different parts of our sites. Remember, we said we don't talk very efficiently. Communication 
is weak everywhere. So if you had to order a spare for one part in the site, the other one did not know, and there we got two. Now all spares get shelved. 90 days you don't use it, it's available for the whole company. Before you set the purchase order, you send the request, you first have to ask the, the other site if they can release it. I don't have the numbers, but I know one thing. The whole company is dancing with this, dancing because they cannot order. So everybody's talking to each other, saying, do you need this? And suddenly saying, this person is calling me, who is he? Now there's communication going back and forth because somebody needs a spare. Operations, DPR from the system now. Remember, they were in the books earlier. Planning, we now have budgets. The previous software, we never had budgets to work with. Now everything is questioned only because they can plan for you efficiently to give you the vendor payments on time. This is what I was told, and I've started to believe that. Earlier, I thought they were going to question everything I buy. They actually put in a release strategy in which the finance actually came in and said, listen, we've never had the intention to stop you from buying. We just wanted to make you buy efficiently so that we can give you money on time. Finance, we now have a treasury module. We never had it before, so we don't know what's it like to be before that. The Waybridge integration. We've now had two Waybridges actually in the process of getting integrated, and that's going to be fantastic because our next stage is going to actually be able to capture the Waybridge material number, the, the truck number, along with the PO, actually, which actually comes with it. Plant and machinery, central tracking of assets and maintenance schedules. Production planning, crushing plant, batching plant, production tracking with the PP module. On 23rd of April, we were up with 131 total sites, yards, and offices. We have 116 processes in SAP. We have 450 users and 55 master roles. We had 255 master roles, and each of them had just today, when I speak the SAP language, we had one, one T code which was off. And for every one, we had a unique code. So for every individual, actually, there was a separate role earlier. Remember I said nobody speaks? When we went live, we all came together, right from the MD to every single person on the site who collaborated. They were called in. They were introduced. The reasons very specifically I brought this together. When you bring the right tool, you bring people together. And remember, it's the people who make the tool work. This was the first time in the history of Patel that we had 450 people participate at one location. Some of them, like I said, are USPs, people don't leave, but they don't meet. For some of them had heard of each other, had never met each other. So we've had people who say, oh, it's you. I knew you 30 years back when you, you know, I left a site and you came in. That is what SAP brought us with this. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Dashboards. This has happened to us actually just the day before yesterday. The good the bad and the ugly. We always thought a site is giving a lot of money, and the others did not. The dashboards make everything a reality. Just two days back, the, come, the project that we thought was giving a big bonus to all of us, we realized it had taken a lot of money from the client as advance. This couldn't have been real before. Freedom is in the other side of discipline. Because when you have standard SOPs, you don't have to go after people. They are set free to make their own decisions. They do things so they can, you can train them to do better stuff rather than go after them and make them do things. This time we had a system which actually had processes inbuilt for them to do things efficiently. What we did, the old system we were managing, the legacy system we were working with was about control. We've now come to monitor. It's a big, big, big leap forward for us. 
where we no longer talk as to why did you do it. We no want, now want to find out what is it that we do to figure this out. It has gone from blame to game. Thank you, all of you. You've been a fantastic audience. Thank you.